أيها المسلمون أيها المسلمون أيها المسلمون أيها المسلمون أيها المسلمون أيها المسلمون تذكرت الجهاد ففاض دمعي وهيا جبلتي ذل الركوني بكت عيني بلوم أو خذوني إلى أرض الجهاد وادعوني سيدنا محمد سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله الطاهر الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه وعترته ومن سار على هديه مقتفى أثارهم إلى يوم الدين ودي رسبكت البرابز and sisters audience I'm so sorry today um, just lately brother عبد الجليل uh, جزاء الله خير requested me to come and say something but I'm really tired والله and uh, I don't know what to say and one of the things also brothers uh, I read before in a book called Al Kamil fi Tariq, the complete in history that Ibn al Athir, Ibn al Athir was a big historian, brothers and sisters. At the time when the Mongols invaded the Islamic land, they took Iran, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, all those countries in the Russian uh, Federation, and then the seized Baghdad, the time of Muslims exactly the same as Muslims in Edward Road smoking cheese and there going to nightclubs doing all those sort of things they seized them they destroyed them Ibn al-Athir brothers and sisters said narrating that people in Syria at the time they were smelling the dead bodies from Baghdad from Iraq imagine if now it didn't happen the states of the Muslim Ummah at that time was worse worse and worse the reason I'm saying that, brothers and sisters, because I want you to understand that وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيز A verse of Quran that if you stick together and if the Muslim Ummah it try, just try to reunite, Allah will give them victory over these kafirs, over these dhalims. That's the way you have to say it. America, the United States, snakes. That's the very description I heard it from one brother. They're not a state, they're snakes. They eaten the whole humanity. They destroyed everything, and that's what they've done to our sister, brothers. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has narrated, uh, or oh, sorry, um, Imam Muslim has narrated in his Sahih, according to Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiyallahu taala anhu. The hadith is quite large, but I just want to go to the first part of the hadith. He said, "Ya ibadi, O my servants." I have prohibited oppression on my soul. That's Allah the Almighty. And I have made oppression amongst you. It's also forbidden and prohibited. So don't oppress each other. Our sister today has been oppressed big time. And the fact, I, sh I shouldn't say sister Afia. There are many Afias, brothers and sisters. Some of them you might know. Some of them maybe just lawyers and certain people in the government they know about. And some of them I'm sure right now detained in secret prisons and nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring them back home soon. So I want to go back again brothers to what Imam Ibn al-Kathir uh, Ibn al-Athir has said. So the states of, of the Muslim Ummah at the time was really, really bad. The Mongols, they were going forward. They came to Syria. They destroyed Syria. They took Syria. The only place left at that time, or the only Islamic army, the whole Islamic Ummah were relying upon is Egypt and in Egypt there was a famous scholar brothers don't forget about this name 
His name, Al Izz ibn Abdul Salam. Imam Izz ibn Abdul Salam, he brought up a nation, a strong soldiers, fighters. They left the dunya behind their back. And then they made up in a place in Palestine now called Ain Jalut. And in Ain Jalut, they were supported by your Muslim brothers and sisters or their grandparents, I would say, right now in Gaza. So the people of Gaza and the people of Egypt, they destroyed those oppressors like these ones. And inshallah, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if America, they're going to remain the same, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people like you, brothers and sisters, and others, inshallah, we're going to put the nose in the dust, inshallah. But in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not fearing them. I'm not, I don't, I personally, brothers, I don't fear them. And I believe jihad against America is compulsory if, for every single Muslim and Muslimah. That is the fact. That's what we have to say. Because Americans, Americans are violent, are oppressors, are killers. They raped our sister. They've done a lot of things to her. But inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now for the meantime, just we do everything we can, inshallah, to get her back. We want them to understand that these soldiers in here, they're not forgetting about you, America. They're not forgetting about, about, about their sister. We're not forgetting about our sister. We want our sister to be back home. We want her to be back home. We want her to be reunited again with her family. So please, brothers and sisters, at the moment, the only thing I would like to say, as I was respected by, uh, requested by uh, my brother Abdul Jalil, is the issue of dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kul ma ya'ba'u bikum rabbi lawla dua'akum. How would he expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to look at you if you don't make dua? A dua is the ibadah. That's how it was described by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do make lots of dua for our sister. Not just for her, for every, for every sister, for every brother detained in Afghanistan, in Guantanamo, in Abu Ghraib, in any other place. Do pray for them. And Allah will answer the dua. The other thing also, brothers, donation. I believe you owe Muslim brothers and sisters here in the UK, you got money. Don't compare yourself to other Muslims around the world. You got money. I'm sure if everyone take five, put his hand in his pocket, he will take five pounds off. Take it now. I want to request every brother at least not to go from here until he take five pounds if he if his pocket and put it in the bucket in there. That's gonna for you got for your sister Afia. If you're not gonna spend it here, I'm sure you're gonna spend it there. You're gonna spend spend it in Starbrook or somewhere else. Put it here. It's gonna go for your sister, for her lawyers. For people who are going to support her. If it didn't go directly to her, it might go to someone in similar situation. The money is not gonna be taken by these people. They're not gonna put it in their pocket. So please, brothers and sisters, make sure to donate today. Please, I request you again and again. I normally when I go for events for hugs or for uh, like um, other people just say brothers please we want some donations we don't want it like that now I, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an he used to go in the streets and he used to call people he said come to salah and when they ask him said Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahdikum nara wa quduha al-nasu wal hijara and also Sheikh Murtad the last time he highlighted a verse called Ma salakakum fi saqar Allah will ask them, ما سلككم في سقر? Oh people, look for, why are you in سقر? In Jahannam. قالوا لم نكن من المصلين. We were not among the ones who performed the salah. ولم نكن نطعم المسكين. When we were not feeding the miskins, the ones in need. And this sister is not miskin, it's worse. It's her level is worse than miskin. She's a seer. And Imam Malik, Rahimah Allah said, if the whole money, the whole budget of the Islamic Ummah was spent to release, to release one Muslim prisoner, it should be spent. So please, take as much as money you can, inshallah, and put it in that bucket. <laughs>
تذكرت الجهاد ففاض دمعي